Thanks, Alex. Actually, it's very timely that we came after Candace's talk, because uh, we're going to very materially sort of show part of the realization of that. All right. Thanks, Jason. That's why you're the guy. <laughs> um, so actually, originally, we put together the talk. We were going to talk about how we're going to crush it, how we're going to make money, how we're going to have companies you know, bring more value to shareholders. Um, we're still going to do a little bit of that, but actually half the conversation is going to be about how we're going to ruin the world. Um, so you, you'll see very quickly when it switches. Um, so topic, how, would, how to profit while destroying the free world, which is what we do. Um, we solve this problem. There's 4 million FTEs in North America who do data entry for a living. Um, who here has ever had a data entry job? That's a horrible, horrible job. The world will be a better place when we don't have to do it, but the reality is 4 million people still do it for a living. They rely on it for their living. So any Mad Men fans? Uh, I think in season three, they rolled in the photocopier and then all the typists sort of stared at it because it was the future and they knew that something was changing. This is what we do. So all of those data entry jobs, basically sort spoke, replaces all of those with AI. Um, I was going to have this talk where we talk about how we sell to the enterprise, how we kill it. Not going to bother with that. Go to SalesTO, they'll tell you all of that. Um, but I will talk a little bit about selling AI to the enterprise. It's a little bit different than generally selling enterprise software. So first of all, you know, agility is really key. You, know, you, you don't want to be the guy that goes in and say, hey, we'll give you something, but you have to work with us for a year to train the systems, right? Businesses don't have the patience for that. Um, and we th thought that was really critical to, for it to have a system that could go in you know, really change a business really, really quickly. The other thing I think to, to keep in consideration if you're going to AI is try to be best of breed at something. Be awesome at that one thing. Assume that you're going to integrate with a whole bunch of other things rather than try to, you know, transform an end-to-end -end enterprise. Um, second thing, quality. You have to be at least as good as the humans. Otherwise, you're just a tech demo. That's, it's, that's all it is. Um, and the third thing, provability. So we thought it was really important that we could go into an enterprise and show within a week exactly how much money you're going to save, or in the case of what we do, how many FTEs you're going to be able to let go. Um, so what does success mean? Well, success means a lot of money for us. It means 80 to 90% labor savings for our customers. Um, but it does mean that a team of 10 or a team of 100 now is a team of 1 or a team of 10. Um, that's really the fundamental impact of what we do. If we're killing it, we're making money, we're helping our customers make money, it means people are going to lose their jobs. Like, we are the embodiment of what Candace was talking about. <laughs> no, so this is where the, the, the conversation gets sad. Um, so, but what does this mean for the workers? And I've met a lot of them. I mean, there are people oftentimes have been sitting there doing that same job for 20 years, um, you know, often in a desk like that. You know, the owners, the company, the shareholders, they're going to make more money. Everyone's happy up there. There's going to be skilled workers who don't have to do menial work. They'll be happy as well. But there's going to be an entire class of people that are going to be not unemployed, they'll be unemployable. Because all of the mo jobs they could have moved laterally into are also going to be automated. Um, and you know, how many of them are going to go and learn how to code? Some, but, but not all. So I, if I could take away one thing is I think we're going to see over the next 10 years to 20 years, a whole class of people that are going to become unemployable. Not unemployed, unemployable. And the key issue is how do we help these people as a society? I don't have the answer to that, by the way. Actually, I do. Um, so two key things. One, I actually think democracy is a pretty weak and fragile thing. Uh, if you have a quarter of your populace, of your voting populace, that doesn't have a job, they, they're going to make a lot of silly voting decisions and vote really strange things into power. Um, it's going to happen. We're, we're already seeing it in places in the world, right? Um, but I do think we need to really rethink. There's an opportunity here. You know, why is everyone working 40 hours a week? There's no reason, right? AI should be able to let everyone work 16 or 20 hours a week and still enjoy the same lifestyle. Uh, it's just that all the money is going to the top. Um, and I think we fundamentally have to rethink social programs. Um, I'm a big UBI guy, happy to have the conversation afterwards. But um, there's things that the private industry is not going to be able to solve, but we have to solve as a, as a society. And that's sort of the dark side of what we do. So thank you. Questions? Please don't throw tomatoes at me. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, about a year or two years ago, this was up on the social media because of this development of 
machine learning, AI, automation, white collar jobs being eliminated, whether it's accounting or stock trading, whatever. There was a question going around, should we be taxing all these people we're laying off? If you're gonna lay off 5,000 people, then government should socially structure it to collect revenue because now the government has to put them under unemployment insurance and health care and benefits and all of that thing. You mean you may have to raise your basis of the taxes because you're gonna have mass unemployment like I think was it 10 years ago, five years ago, Greece and a lot of people are unemployed sitting around doing nothing and nowhere they can contribute to buy to products in the economy or anything else. So I'd like to get your thoughts about it. How do you think we might be able to help resolve the m mass unemployment, which you think for the white collar jobs, which was blue collars back uh, years ago for the automotive industry? Yeah, so, so I'm definitely not um, a trained economist, so take this with a huge grain of salt. Um, I, I think we definitely need to tax the people generating and accumulating wealth more and redistribute that down. Like, I, I do think some variation of universal basic income where everyone, irregardless of what they do for a living, should be able to have a decent standard of living, right? And if that means everyone gets $40,000, maybe everyone should get $40,000 and everyone else should just be taxed. Um, you know, some variation of that I think is probably the right answer. Hey, have you tried selling your software to enterprises in developing countries? I'm thinking especially India to try to lay off the workforce there. And what's your success rate been there because uh, considering labor is already so cheap? Seriously curious. Yeah, so, so we, we're, we're still a young startup based in Toronto. So we, we, we haven't reached overseas very honestly yet, uh, but we've had conversations with some sort of BPO multinationals that do that. Um, there's still just as much opportunity to you know, reduce headcount, whether it's in India or Shanghai or whatnot. Um, it, it's not just onshore high cost labor. One more question. Um, so I, I'm guessing that you've kind of, if you're laying off all these workers and like, let's say um, the government was giving $40,000 to each family that, you know, was laid off, like, what do you see the future of this could be if, you know, things, you know, it was like a, a utopia, <laughs> so to speak. What, where, do you, where do you see this kind of, how do you see this actually working in the what if scenario? Yeah, so, so again, not an economist, mm -hmm. but um, I, I actually see a model where everyone, regardless of whether they're employed or not, gets $40,000 or pick a random number, right? Because with $40,000, you should be able to live, or some other number, you should be able to live a decent living, pursue your dreams, take up art, do what you enjoy, um, and to the extent that you want to work a few extra hours to, to do, you know, get more income, to take a flight or something like that, that's up to you. But everyone should have a base standard of living whereby they have, you know, dignity in life, right? Thanks so much.